It's the good stuff, baby. <laughs> We're ready to take you on this journey for bag part two. We've got new wheels, we've got drop suspension, and we have got red calipers. This is my daily exercise, by the way. Now we've got that out of the way. It's all going to be about all the cinematic stuff. None of the whole before. If you haven't seen bag part one, I suggest you go and check it out because it's actually all about fitting and everything else. And the really, the, the sound guys at AR Tuning who fitted it all up for me and everything they did, that's all in part one. This is going to be the video that was missing from YouTube when I was looking. We're going to talk about what it does. We're going to talk about why I want it to do it. We're going to show you the control facility, pros, cons, it's all in this video. Let's get the intro out of the way and we'll get rocking on it. Welcome back to the channel guys. Just to point straight out, we are in an isolated location. There is nobody else here. And my wife's doing the shopping just a few yards away in that supermarket. So I took this golden opportunity to make the video that you all have been waiting for. Bagged part two. So let's get straight into it. Let's get inside the van and I'll talk you through the control system and where I mounted it. Um, this view that you're looking at right now, that's um, my kind of parked mode. I'm not fully aired out. I tend not to do that much because I just like this view. Um, I think it's sitting perfectly and I've set it all up to do that. It has got a bit more to go and I will show you that in this video but this is how I like to leave it. I just think it's just right. Okay, so I'm sat inside the vehicle, engine's running, and I'm on preset low. Preset low is my parked height, as I explained earlier. It's set to um, 22 in the front and around 50 in the back, I think, actually. Can you, if you see these lower numbers, actually, I need to work on that slightly. Uh, when I did that, I must have had a drink. Uh, it's telling me I want 20 and 19, 46 and 45, so I think I did it on a, I don't know, <laughs> I sort that out. It's very easy to sort that out and I'll show you in a minute. But preset low is my park type, so when I want to drive away, um, typically when I start the engine it will do it for me, but I'm going to simulate that. If I push this centre button three times, we've just aired up to preset right. This is the height I daily drive at. 
it's used a bit of the tank air which is the pressure you see now going up in the top right the light is flashing here air lift that's telling me that it's dealing with the suspension you can drive off if you know that your wheels are high enough and stuff while it's doing that but probably a best idea just to hang on a sec um, and uh, it's, it's obviously dealt with that now uh, so now you see I've got 42 in the two fronts, 65 in the rears because we're on a relatively flat surface. It's nice and uh, nice and steady, and there's 150 psi up there now in the tank at the back, at the, underneath. The compressors, which were, which you just heard running, they kicked off, and they won't kick back on again unless the pressure drops below 130. So normally I would drive off now, but as we're doing a system demo, I'm going to push um, preset high. So we're airing up a bit higher now, preset high. That, I've programmed that to give me 55 in the front and 75 in the back. And uh, it's finding itself as that light's flashing. So that's my, uh, my top light. So now if I was driving into a um, campsite or something like that, I would be pretty clear at the front. It has got some more to go, um, but that's pretty high now, guys. I think you're pretty much gonna get in anywhere with that. If you need to go further, you can manually, and I'm gonna do that now. These buttons on the top here, I'm gonna bring up the front. You probably saw the front of the car rise. I won't go all the way up right now. Um, you can manually put your pressure in, same on the rears. I can bring them up, and, and we're raising. So if I need to air right up, this is what it looks like. It's pretty insane, isn't it? <laughs> if you want to go in and uh, alter things, you literally hold these two buttons and you can calibrate your setup here. You can, you know, you've got different things you can do. Um, operation, rise on start, so you don't have to have that preset maintain minimum driving height so you can make sure that somebody doesn't accidentally air right down on you um, all a, a whole multitude of settings here um, calibration as well I think I mentioned that already um, it is pretty easy to understand uh, you can tell it whether you've got dual or single obviously I've got dual um, uh, but when it comes to actually setting up what you want your heights to work to, um, you basically program like now I've, I've done something manually here. Let's say I wanted this to be my preset high. I'm pumping up the right hand side so that I've got an even amount and I've got, and I'm going to drop 87 in the rears. All I would do now is push and hold my the desired button and it will store those heights and then basically that becomes that function so you've got your stored height so it's that simple to um, to set it up how you want which is why um, I, I went with air lift as so I, I kind of read into that and I, I was able to get that information off YouTube on some exotic cars and stuff but yeah um, it's it's really right really quite easy to uh, to program what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the levels that this system can go to. So first of all, this is aired out. How good does that look, guys? Ah. <laughs> this is preset low, how I have it set. This is preset ride, which as I said was daily driven height. And that's preset high. So that's where I've got mine set. So if I need to just pull onto a campsite or uh, down to a beach path or anywhere where I've got some problems ahead or an uneven road, touch of a button and you're cruising like that. Another thing guys, uh, did you know that you can control this from your phone? So if I just open up the app, it's gonna connect up to my system, sync in, there we go. I don't know if I'm in focus with this. Okay, hopefully that's focusing now. So there we go. Um, it's, it's literally 
a, 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 a replica of what we're seeing here, but. <laughs> How cool is that, guys? You can put on a show when you're not even in the van. You can literally, it's got a decent range because it's Bluetooth, you can do this from outside the van. So you can actually put it into show mode um, and control it up or down. Um, yeah, very, very clever, but um, probably a bit gimmicky really on the phone, but I think if you do attend shows and you're using it for that sort of thing, then that's exactly why you'd have it on your phone. Uh, for me, um, probably not gonna get much use on the phone, but yeah. It's still cool though, peeps. I really hear. Yeah. yeah, this system just gets better and better. Anyway. So it's time to talk about these wheels, guys. Vossen CV10s, brand new. I think the rim's only been available for a few months. And uh, I, I didn't even get the opportunity to really see this wheel before I had to get it brought into the country. But um, big thanks to Wheelbase Alloys in Manchester once again because they've hooked me up. They've got these to my door and they held my hand right the way through the journey for me because obviously I've, I've kind of been the guinea pig here to figure out what wheels I should be working with that are going to allow me to air up, air down, no rubbing and tyre sizes. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy about how it's turned out. Um, I love the finish because I've gone with the silver polished, as I said, and um, I just think they go well on the grey van. And not to mention, it's a little garnish of uh, some red shiny calipers. Boom. Let me give you a close up on these wheels, see what you think. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the way these have turned out. This is the uh, uh, preset low we're sitting in at the moment, I think. Um, actually, no, this is aired out, sorry. And um, yeah, the combination of the polished silver with the, with the metallic gray, um, that just, I just, that's just how I pictured it. And I've put a little sprinkle of some color in those wheels now. Never thought I'd have time to paint the calipers, guys. <laughs> but with this lockdown and the caliper paint, Look, I got red calipers. <laughs> anyway, they do look good, so job done. Tick. Um, yeah. All right. So size-wise, we're looking at 20-inch diameter by 9J wide. Um, the offset on these wheels is ET35 front and rear. Um, so they're a match. They're not. They're not a staggered offset this time. Um, as you can see, it is tight, but it does go. It will air right out completely and it won't touch. So I'm really pleased with the fact that they've come in on plan. We've got um, 255, 35, 20 tires on the back, and I've got a 245, 35, 20 on the front. So where the bigger load is going to be concerned when you actually put a payload in the back, I've got slightly more rubber because the rating on that tire is slightly higher. Uh, to be honest, they are not up to the manufacturer's spec. Let me put that out there right now. So you've got to be aware of that. But it depends if you've got a bit of common sense because if you are going to be using this for a builder's van or you're going to be using that payload, because this is a T32, um, you can actually, with all passengers fully loaded up, could be 3.2 tonnes running here. 
um, it, it's probably going to be not going to be sensible to use these wheels and tires because the first bad hole you hit it's going to be over but that's not what I'm using the van for this is a day van it's empty uh, and, and light it's got five passengers in it so my calculations and the weight with the tire and the ratings I've got on here were good so I'm happy but if I was going to carry anything I would just fit the original stock wheels for that journey because I think I'm getting better at changing these wheels now guys I've had enough practice with these wheels and I'm, with my gun I'm, I'm, I can swap a set of wheels in about 35-40 minutes yeah if you need any wheels guys I'd really recommend Wheelbase Alloys Manchester speak to Steve Steve Cox and he will just look after you and hold your hand right the way through the journey. They, do, they ensure that you're getting a wheel that's going to fit and if it doesn't, you know, they are, they've been there years as a company so the backup's going to be there, they're, they're there to make sure your wheels fit and work. I'm divulging a little bit but I'm, I'm very impressed with that company and if you want the same level of service I got, Steve will look after you. Don't forget to say hello as well from me. Um, and I'm not paid to say that, guys. That's, that, that's why it's a genuine recommendation. They, there's nothing in it for me. I just think praise is due where praise is due. Anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a minute now to run through some of the pros and the cons to the air ride system. Starting with some of the cons. Number one, it's expensive. But then so are these vans, so it is kind of suited to the product. Um, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Number two, it will require some maintenance. It isn't just a case of buy it and, you know, 10 years and you're good. It will require some maintenance, but it's only light maintenance and the actual air ride, air lift uh, management system is lifetime guaranteed. Um, Number three, the compressors. They're a little on the loud side, so they've got a bit of a job to do, obviously, but luckily for me, uh, AR Tuning have mounted them on the underside of the van between the um, plastic guards and the subframe. So, um, so it's not too bad inside the van. And then the wheels. So obviously for me, it was an expensive situation because I was running wide wheels and they wouldn't fit. But if you're not running those, then it really isn't a con. If your wheels will tuck because of their size and offset, then you're good to go. Now, some of the pros. Um, pros are, it's a very smooth ride at all levels. So if you want to run with a low look, you get a great ride. Um, you don't have to lose your fillings. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you need to pump it up, you still get a great ride, even if you want to ride at something close to a sort of stockish height, um, it still drives quite well. Um, but I find that the, the preset ride that you see me at my um, set my van at, it rides absolutely superb. So I take the family out, everyone's comfortable, and I don't feel like I've just completely ruined a very expensive van. Um, point two. Uh, it's razable so on a pro site it's razable very very quick at the touch of a button on the dash there I can lift the front end I can lift the whole van in fact to just get straight off road or onto areas where you'd normally suffer and start snapping body panels and ripping splitters off which I have done in the past um, you can level the van on uneven surfaces so if you're in the scenario that you're camping in your van and the slope you, you've got like a, a slope on the ground you can actually manually adjust one side to get your van uh, to some degree of level so if you're sleeping in the van it'll be nice and level for you so that's a really cool pro um, if you uh, if you want to show off your van you know a touch of a button on your phone or on the control panel you can drop it right down air out and it looks superb so it's got a great uh, great visual appearance when it's dropped out it's a system that's upgradable so um, you can actually put something called 3H onto this which is you have a sensor on each wheel and if you throw some load in the back it will just adjust for you and um, and keep your ride height exactly where you programmed it. To be honest with you, um, 
the fact that I haven't got that, it's not no real biggie. I just would push the uh, the air up in the rears if I had a heavy load in the back anyway. And and um, yeah, but it's upgradable is the point. And then there's another point which I never thought would be a, a good one, but if you turn up at a garage uh, for a service or tyre garage or anything like that where you've got to drive onto the ramps like you saw in Bags Part 1, you can air up and drive straight on. Um, being that I've modified a few cars over the years, I've had situations where you know you've got to put several blocks of wood down and one of them slips away and ah! anyway, touch of a button, you can air up and drive onto these ramps or, or my trolley jack. It won't fit under the van if I were to be on my coils, but. Um, you know, you have to use a, a, a smaller jack to lift that or drive onto a block of wood, but I just air up and then pull, push the trolley jack under and and it's up. So that's a really good point. Okay, that pretty much covers it from me on the pros and cons. It's time to hand it back to me. <laughs> Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Any comments, throw them bot down below and I will do my best to answer everybody's. And um, yeah, if you're not already subscribed, maybe you consider subscribing today because we've got plenty more transport content coming out on this channel. And um, now the exterior is completely finished. I'll be starting work on the inside. Catch you in the next one, guys.